Now, as a wrestling fan, I am fully come to grips with the fact that wrestling will never be like it used to. It's just not going to be quite the same style. It's not going to ever reach those heights that it once had attained. It's just not going to. It's just not. And it's whatever. So I watch professional wrestling and I look for like certain moments, certain characters, certain matches, but a lot of wrestling now I could just totally pass on. And it doesn't matter the company, WWE, AEW, New Japan, Impact, like a lot of it just feels the same. It's repetitive. And a big reason for that is the talent, or I dare I would say the lack of talent in the professional wrestling industry. And when I say lack of talent, that will rub some people the wrong way. Fine. When I'm thinking of talent, what I don't consider talent is guys that sit and just go bumpy, bumpy, fucky, fucky through a damn match for 20 minutes. Where the only way they can get the crowd invested is they damn near have to look like they're killing themselves. Repeatedly. Meanwhile, the whole flow of their match is stupid. The structure of the match is stupid. And how many times do you talk about this match? It was a great match until the finish. As if the finish wasn't the only thing at the end of the day that fucking matters with the match. Like so many of these modern matches just can't get the finish right. Because they do so much to try and get you to bust a nut repeatedly throughout the damn match that they forget about what's supposed to be the ultimate uh, O-face climax. Uh. Because you're sitting there trying to contain yourself from doing it because this size sat there and doubled a double, triple, flippy credunzel into a flaming shard of ass glass. So many one-dimensional performers in wrestling now. And when I say one-dimensional, no, I'm not talking about because the guys are small. No, no. It's just vanilla. The talent is vanilla. They're bland. Because even if you say, well, they're a great wrestler. Okay, so they do a bunch of moves in the ring. Well, who the fuck doesn't anymore? That doesn't make you stand out. That doesn't make you unique. What makes somebody unique in wrestling now is somebody that is a well-balanced performer. Somebody that can tell a story in the ring. My God, could you imagine being able to tell a story in the ring when wrestling as an art form is about storytelling at the end of the day? It's drama, it's soap opera, it's all of that. Could you fucking imagine? Wrestling is about creating emotional investment with your audience. A meaningful one that resonates and lingers for a long, long time. Bump it around a bunch in matches, that ain't how you do it. Being great on the microphone, having charisma, having a personality, being able to be a character and work as a character, to be able to get yourself over, to be able to help get others over. Those are the things that matter the most. And you don't get that much of that in wrestling now. However, there are still some guys that get it. There are still some guys that know how to do that. There are still some guys that can be those five tool players and are those five tool players. And when I look at AEW, they sure as hell have got one in Maxwell Jacob Friedman. MJF is absolutely a five tool player. He's got the look of a wrestler. He's got the act of a wrestler. He's got the walk of a wrestler, the talk of a wrestler. He's got the ability to connect with the audience. And when you say connect, well, he makes them boo. They connect with him in a way that they hate him. Or at least they did. He is able to generate heat on a level that not a lot of guys and gals can. Very, very few can, as a matter of fact. And most impressively at all about MJF is He's not trying to sit there and pop Meltzer. He's not trying to sit there and pop the internet. He enjoys being hated. He enjoys the heat. And that's wonderful. Because you get that so rarely now. So many overly sensitive bitches involved with wrestling. It's crazy. 
Like the biggest marks in professional wrestling today are the wrestlers and the people in the business. Those are the biggest crybabies, the biggest pussies. Thin skin all the way around. But MJF, he lives for it. He feasts off it. He loves it. And that's the whole thing. Like it's inevitable with a talent as great as an MJF that at some point in time, no matter how great he is as a heel, no matter how great he is as a presented, perceived, believed bad guy, villain, at some point in time, that shit ain't just going to work anymore. And at some point in time, you have to stop going against the grain. And we have absolutely reached a point with AEW, and especially with the MJF character, that it is time to embrace the babyface side. It is time to go there. It is time to let the people love the guy. And some might say, well, they choose to love him by booing him. I get that, but no. As many things as they try to portray about an MJF on television, about why he's hateable, because he comes in and he craps on the people in the city. Well, you know, Americans are fat, lazy, stupid slobs. So going to different cities and crapping on these cities, like, yeah, it's all true. So now we're going to make a guy a villain because he's telling the truth? Well, <laughs> In this world, yeah, we certainly do, don't we? But that, to me, makes him a babyface because he's keeping it 100. At what point in time do fans no longer want to boo the guy that they know is a day one original talent for AEW? He's a homegrown star, relatively speaking, that he's been passed over for the top spot from the flavor of the month that Tony Khan's brought in, and all the while, all MJF has done is made people better for being involved with him, from the Wardlows to the CM Punks to what have you. The inner circle was better because MJF was involved with Jericho. Like, you could go throughout the almost three-year history now of AEW and say that basically everybody that has worked with MJF is better off because they worked with MJF. Jericho, Darby Allen, Wardlow, Punk, I go on. We all know this to be true. And when you look at this company now, like frankly, I know a lot of people love Moxley and I respect them. He's not my flavor. I, I think some of his speeches talking about, uh, uh, like, fuck that. Like, you got to recognize at some point in time, like, I'm not trying to compare MJF to The Rock, because that's unfair. Different time, different eras, different performers. However, what is similar is at some point in time, you know, The Rock was so hated as a heel. You know, different ways too. Like at first he had that Rocky Maya via die, Rocky die heat. To then they went with it, they embraced it. He created a new persona, a new character. And the fans fucking hated him. But at some point in time, you kind of crossed that threshold of becoming so hated that now you become beloved. And eventually when the WWF went with The Rock as a baby face... They were doing their biggest business in that era. And that's not an accident. Like you look at in terms of from a financial standpoint, the year 2000 was the best of the Attitude Era for the WWF. And Austin wasn't even there as an in-ring talent or a consistent on-screen presence. The Rock was the top guy. Well, the top guy not named Vince McMahon, mind you. But you got to the point with The Rock where you can't fight it anymore. And you're getting to the point here now with MJF that there's only so many things you could do with him portraying him as a villain. There is only so many things you could do with him as a bad guy, as a heel, as a villain. Meanwhile, you've got the crowd and you've seen it a couple of different times. 
Like at All Out when MJF appeared. Like, yeah, it was a return pop. It was more than a return pop. It was people understanding how great MJF is. It is people understanding how much they missed MJF and how much they want to see MJF. And I'm not even saying that MJF has to dramatically change his character. He could still do some of the insulting crap, but then every once in a while give them people a freaking bone. But the time is now. You need that homegrown massive baby face. MJF's that dude. You need that guy that fans are connected with on that level, on that side of the fence. MJF is that dude. Like you could continue to go down the path of portraying him as a villain, as a heel, and it's going to work to some degree. I am not here to say that if you continue to push MJF as a heel, that it's not going to work and it's going to be a disaster. That's not true. This is more about recognizing that you have it really good here, but you could go to a whole different level with a slightly different presentation. That's what my argument is. Similar to The Rock. Is at some point in time, a guy becomes so hated that eventually people realize this damn, damn guy is so damn good at what he does. Like, this is a talent. Like, this is special. And I can't boo this man anymore. He's entertaining me too much. The reality is, is MJF is entertaining people too much right now to be hated. Even if they boo him sometimes, they don't hate him. It's not John Cena heat. MJF is that damn good at what he does. But at some point, you've got to recognize where the momentum is. You've got to recognize where you need to go. And MJF being a babyface champion for AEW works better than some of the other babyface champions that you've had. It does. Because he's that five-tool talent. And you could easily pivot and have a number of different heels come after him. There are a lot of different things you could do with a babyface MJF as champion. I think even more than what you could do with a heel MJF as champion. But to me, as much as anything else, this is a moment in time where, with all the stuff that went down with CM Punk and the Elite, you have to pivot and shift. And if you're going to say, well, you don't know if MJF's going to be there in the long term. You can figure that out later. Especially with Vince being gone. MJF should take a second thought and think about just how great a WWE would even be for him. I would have more, honestly, I'd have more faith that an MJF would be taken care of very well by a Vince McMahon than I would a Hunter and Stephanie. So there's that. But you're at that point in time where you've seen it a couple of different times. When you've given the illusion of babyface for MJF, the crowd has eaten it up. And then you've pulled the rug out from under him. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. The great thing about MJF is he can always go back to being a heel. Although I dispute just how much of a heel he really is. But by going to full-on presentation of him as a baby face. You're freshening him up as a character. You're freshening up your presentation. You're shaking shit up at a time that, frankly, I think AEW needs to shake some shit up. You can always go back to MJF being portrayed as a heel or a villain, and that's going to work too. And if anything, by taking a break from this side of the fence, going to the other side of the fence, you come back home to this side of the fence, that's going to work even better when you come back to it. But you do eventually get to a point, especially in modern wrestling, of diminishing returns. It's one of the reasons people got so sick and tired of fucking seeing John Cena. And now, when he does rarely come back, people delude themselves into thinking he was greater than he actually was. Because how are the fuck are you going to miss you if you never go away? Well, in the case of Cena, he never changed his fucking character. You got a diminishing return on the same old shit year after year. You do not want to get to that place with one of your top guys and MJF is your top guy. In AEW. You got to run with it. You got to make him the baby face that runs the place. You can fight against the grain all you want. But the momentum is there. And the fans want it. Tony Khan AEW 
It's time to pull the trigger, go full on baby face with MJF. I promise, I promise you won't regret it.